Hello and welcome to the Business of Property podcast. I'm Stuart. And I'm Simon. And we're both property people running our own property businesses. And this podcast is just us chatting every week about the reality of anything and everything property. And Simon and I were just discussing some of the data that's been coming through on PATMA and rental amounts. But before we do get into that, just a quick reminder that at the top of the show nights within this podcast player that you're listening on, you will see a link to take you through to the Business of Property email subscribe list. Please go over there and join the many others that are joining us at the moment. And we do promise to start consolidating and getting out some useful resources, including the data and charts that we talk about be that via Patma or any other resource that we think will be useful to you for your property investing. So Simon, we were talking about Patma and rental prices. Do you want to give us a quick overview of what you're seeing at the moment? Yep, certainly. It's very interesting that the the news you read in in the press always seems to have a bit of a lag to it. So earlier on this year, we were seeing rental prices going up and we were seeing really high rental demand. And we were talking about it a bit and a few places were were talking about that. And now you see a lot of things in general press, not just property press, about rents increasing and there being massive demand or massive over demand for, for rental properties. And in actual fact, now that picture is not quite right. That that was the picture a few months back. But in the last couple of months, while there is still high demand for rental properties and probably still too much demand for each rental property, that the demand has dropped a bit and the asking rents we're seeing coming through for new rental property listings are dropping just a little bit. Not this isn't massive. It's not a big change. It's just just a little bit down from previous months. And it's also fairly regional. So, for example, in the southeast, this hasn't really been the case. Asking rents have stayed pretty stable in the southeast. Maybe dropped a little bit in some areas, maybe still going up in some areas, but mostly pretty stable. Whereas in the rest of the country, that's where they have been been dropping a little bit more. And th- this might be sort of a bit concerning, but mostly I think this is just seasonality. Because people don't really want to move over Christmas. And if you're looking for a rental property right now, then you're probably looking to be moving in a month's time or maybe a couple of months' time if you're you're looking really optimistically early. So that would, would put you in around during Christmas time. And and people really don't want to do that. So it's hardly surprising that there's a bit less demand for, for rental properties at this time of year. And and hence, if you do want to list a rental property, you're you're going to list it at a, a slightly lower price in order to actually get get some interest in it. So it, it would seem, in summary, rents are softening a little bit, but I don't think that's anything to be worried about from from property investing point of view. I think it's just a seasonality thing. As with the the, the purchase prices, it'll be interesting to see whether things do change in January. I, I suspect. Purchase prices will continue to be a bit soft at the beginning of next year, whereas I think rental prices will probably pick up again at the beginning of next year, which is probably just as well, because we're both thinking about how we're going to be increasing rents on our our existing tenants and existing tenancies next year. And I've been been thinking about this. I've got a handful of tenancies to consider. You've you've got one or two more than that. So how are you approaching this this particular task? <laughs> First thing, I was just reflecting as you were talking us through that that we certainly don't want time to go any quicker. It's going far too quick for for fellows of our age. But I would love to just fast forward the clock a couple of months just to see where the market is really going to be. We can make a good assumption based on direction of travel, can't we, in terms of house prices and rents. But I'd really just like to know, wouldn't we, just so we can really forecast. And I guess that's part of what we try and do on this podcast. W- wouldn't everyone? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it would make life so much easier if you could see what uh, was going to happen in the two months' time. <laughs> I know. And that's what I was just thinking. But to your point, yes, we are the evil landlords that are considering rental increases. But 
for anyone that's listened to this podcast, I think, you know, just, just a caveat, I think Simon didn't put a rent increase through for, for a number of years, which, uh, and, and then felt extremely guilty after five years of putting some rent up. So I just want to, to acknowledge that, <laughs> that maybe we're not as evil as, as some might think. In, indeed. And I don't think this is uncommon or, or my, my situation, in fact, your similar situation for having not increased rents for years on an existing tenants, because it, it's often not a, a sort of nice and appealing thing to do. And it does feel feel difficult. And hence, it's much easier to say, well, okay, it's it's as it is, and we'll just carry on. And then you just carry on a bit more, and you carry on a bit more, and then and suddenly it's five years later, and you're you're receiving rent that's that's five years out of date mm. because the the market, the world, and inflation, etc., has has moved on. Yeah, and we will come on to that in terms of what's moved on. As you say, I have sixty individual tenants as well as a couple of buy to lets and just like any rental even if it's an individual buy to let if you get good tenants you want them to stay and we, we you know we, we've talked about that before and and we we are guilty of not wishing to rock the boat and i and i remember a conversation we had on this podcast where i said actually we're probably doing the tenants a disservice and i, I can hear a lot of cynical people you know smiling at this but if we don't move rents on for two or three years, as ridiculous as it sounds, those people may come back out into the market, have to move somewhere else, and the, the world's moved on. And all of a sudden, they've got to find that money. Now, you know, yes, we're not being, you know, I'm not saying by any stretch of the imagination we're being altruistic here, but we do have to to run our properties as a business, you know. Yeah, and and people tend to to live to their means, so if if their rent hasn't increased they've got more spending money so as you say they'll they'll get used to spending that and then as and when they do decide to move which everyone does at some point they'll find that they their their rent budget in their available money just doesn't fit what's out there in the real world so yeah i can understand what you're saying but yes it's, <laughs> i think it might be a hard sell all the same <laughs> well, well, this is the thing. We're not trying to sell it. And when I hear other people talking about it, I still say, yeah, but you can't use that as a as a reason. It's not the, it's not the best reason. However, the, the point we're making is that at some stage, we have to increase the rents. And the issue that I've had is I've had some properties now for two years where those room rates, regardless of who's been in the room, have stayed the same. Now, as you, were, you and I were talking pre-record button, the challenge that I've had is that through through our own uh, weakness and you know lack of uh, willing to to follow through on administration we have never never picked up on energy usage cap rates and I, i'll be completely honest on this pub podcast and publicly that one of the reasons for that is just that i i just haven't had the the energy quite literally to to go through and monitor the meter, you know, the meter um, numbers and look at the usage, which I absolutely should have. And that's on me. That's on no one else because it's my business. However, obviously, what's happened in the last couple of years is because of the significant increases in energy costs, I'm now having to do that properly. So in many ways, and again, this sounds ridiculous, but in many ways, the energy crisis has forced me to, to look at the business and say, right, we're going to have to run this properly, which means I now have to set up a process whereby someone goes out to every one of the properties that we have, of which there are greater than 10, every month and take meter readings. And then every month we'll take those meter readings. And we're still collecting that data at the moment. To be honest, we've been doing it for a couple of months. And then I'm just going to play through how this actually works. So when we sign contracts, every, every tenant, also signs up to uh, a fair usage policy, which which caps usage at a certain level. And obviously, if it goes over that level, they then are required to f- fill up that rent. And you know, we're, we're not taking huge amounts on a monthly basis, but it could it could range from ten to twenty to thirty pounds, which which is still a lot of money for for someone that's renting a room. But obviously, what what's happened is that because we haven't increased the rates. Because I haven't managed the usage of energy properly, it, we've 
we, we were in a place where we've, we've, we we're looking at the, the margins of the business saying, look, this doesn't work. It, you know, the business is just not working. And, and again, that's, you know, this, this podcast is called The Business of Property. And this is an element of the business that we haven't managed properly. So again, I'm just talking about this publicly because to your final point, one of the things that we, we should have done is, is talked about fair annual increase in rents. And a lot of what we've done commercially in, in business in the past is that you will have a, you'll have a contract. If you sign a multi-year contract, typically it will have an RPI element to it, which, which will just align to whatever our, you know, the, uh, the retail price index is. And you know, that could be 2%, it could be 3% at the bare minimum. And again, I think that's fair for all because you know you you talked about it again before we recorded, which is in 2020, actually everybody's costs went down because and actually people were retaining more of what they earned. This is just following on from what you said. But we didn't increase rents at that time because we wanted to make sure that our tenants felt safe and comfortable because that's the one thing. Although my landlord at the time had no compunction about telling me that if we didn't pay the rent on time, we were out. Yes, well, <laughs> but putting that particular landlord to one side, that I mean, there were a lot of landlords who not only didn't increase rents, they actually either decreased them or, or provided temporary rent reductions to, to help their tenants out. So, so yeah, it's it, it's been a strange old two years that we're. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that we were in that sort of mode where we were offering money money off effectively and now we're we're back at saying crikey we're we're way behind the market and rents really need to be increasing again i'm really intrigued how you cope with excess energy use in a shared house where tenants have individual tenancies because surely that's going to create arguments where where you say this this house is over your your quota you all need to pay an extra tenor and one or two of them and say, well, it wasn't me, Gov. It, it's that person next door who has a an electric heater in their room 24 hours a day. <laughs> or, or needs to keep the temperature at 90 degrees for their pet boa constrictor. <laughs> yes, quite. <laughs> to, to pick one random example that, that you've obviously <laughs> never come across before, yes. Well, you say never come across, but in a property we've had many rats, like as in pet rats and, and snake and aquariums. So... Um, yeah, it's it sounds outlandish, but it's not quite. But that but that point is one of the reasons. Is one of the you know there's a, a, a you know a, a compound number of reasons why. But that's another one because we'd say okay, when I look at the um, energy uses usage for this month, it's over a hundred. There's five people in the room, so you're all going to pay an extra twenty quid, and that obviously creates friction within the, the household. And if you've got friction within the household, that means you're going to have a higher turnover of tenants in its simplest form. And obviously, we all want occupancy rates at the highest percentage possible. And that will be another reason, not the only, but that'll be another reason why it's kind of like, oh, do you know what, let's just leave it as is. So do you think increasing the actual rent might be a, a better way to deal with, with these increased costs to you? So rather than trying to, to track the energy and track uh, over usage and then go back to tenants and say, this month you've gone over by X and, and the, then maybe next month it'll be over by Y or something and, and recoup it that way and, and create the bad feeling. Would it actually be better for everyone, you and tenants, to just say rents are going up by 10%, 20% perhaps, because energy has, has gone up quite a lot and, and keep it simple? Well, the answer is, of course, yes, you, you want to do that. And we're going to have to do that anyway, just to, to mitigate some of the loss that's happened over the last year and a half. However, from my perspective, you have to have something like that in the contract. Otherwise, it's just a free for all. And people don't acknowledge the usage that's happening. So I think at least you have it in the contract at the start. And I've got a couple of student tenants which are looking for next year and they are really meticulously going through this usage saying well what was the usage last year and they're really drilling down on it and for me and that was the other point I was going to make before you asked that very pertinent question which was this is for me is as much about awareness as it is following through so that at least if you've got people going in and you say right at the back of your contract 
we slap in a you know clause here and it says look at your usage and then on this final page they see that whether or they whether it actually changes their usage is highly debatable ha- but however at least you've raised the awareness that by the way we expect you to treat this home like you would treat your own and, and put the heating on only when you need it or use things only when you need them i mean if, if they're actually reading it carefully enough to be coming back and asking you questions about it I, I think that's really very promising because as you say that that's a strong indication that it will actually change behavior and hence hopefully avoid the situation in the first place because they will keep their energy use lower mm. so I, I think that's that's a, a really really good positive sign and the, and the second part which you raised about okay so what 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 actually happens when we go out and try and claim it which invariably we will start doing in the coming months and it, it creates this disharmony across, uh, w- within the household. Well, my first thought on that is, well, uh, well, hopefully that starts creating some accountability. And whilst I don't want there to be, you know, arguments or falling out within a household, what I also want is for people to start taking responsibility. And we all know, you know, nine, nine, nine times out of 10, people are fine, but there's always someone that doesn't do the washing up. There's always someone that leaves rubbish next to the bin rather than in the bin. And it, it, it tends to take, you know, a couple of the housemates to just turn around and say, look, here, you, you know, you, you, you're causing this and we need you to take responsibility. And it'll go one of a few ways, won't it? They'll either, you know, acknowledge that, that they've done what they've done or, or um, you know, it will start becoming an issue. But, you know, hopefully not. But for, for me, this is, this is moving into accountability. And, of course, we've done what we can in some of the properties and we still will need to, such as putting in things like timo stats which means that the heating will only stay on for a couple of hours it can only go uh, you know they just have to hit a button and it comes on again i was having an interesting conversation with some other landlords recently and they, they were saying that they've gone off timo stats and there's another product that they they now think is actually much much better it would be really useful if i could remember what it was called wouldn't it i will double check this but but i think the the product they were talking about was from inspire have you come across that one at all stuart I haven't, but I'm jotting it down because I will be looking at I'm looking at everything at the moment. The, the, the challenge also that we have, and this is where, as a business, if you're running it as a business, you have challenges. So we, we've got some cash flow challenges right now, and of course, when I when I talk about this, I think yeah, we've we've put timer stats in maybe three or four buildings, and I really want to do more, but you're talking about a few hundred pounds for the for the for the item itself a couple of hundred quid for the install so you you know you've got an outlay of let's just say circa 500 pounds which overall isn't isn't a huge amount of money but if you if you have to install several of them you're talking you know three to to five thousand pounds and so your 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 mitigation of the the energy increase is is going to be is going to be lagging behind which is fine but where we're at with the cash flow means that we can't really go and spend that money right now. You know, and this is where the, you know, business becomes quite challenging because you have to say, well, okay, what can we do right now? And um, uh, unfortunately, to, 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 to kind of stem the, the flow of losses and, and to, to get the properties back into the market, what we now consider the new market rate is bringing this back full circle. We do have to increase the, the rent rates on many of the properties because we haven't changed them for a few years actually two or three years so okay so we, we have we have come back round to the fact that we are both increasing rents so I, I, I can talk about my process for that but seeing as I'm talking now I will ask you first what what is your actual practical on the ground process for, for working out how much to increase and then actually making that increase happen well, I've had to work very closely with the uh, letting agent and other letting agents. And, and really, it's it's understanding what's happening in the local market. So clearly, it's going to be different for whatever market people are operating in. And we, we've really just had to do some analysis with the letting agents about what we feel is fair, given the current rates. And I can talk about averages rather than specifics, but if if on average you, you know a room rate is four hundred pounds, 
we could be increasing that anywhere between 50 to 100 pounds, which as a percentage seems quite a lot. But when I think that these rooms have been price static for three or four years, actually isn't. You know, when we, when we come back to talking about, you know, the increases we've in sort of, you know, whether that's uh, salary increases or inflation, actually we're well behind. We're well behind in terms of inflation. So, and really it was then just a final discussion with the letting agents to say, look, what are the rates that we feel are acceptable per room so you've got you know small medium large rooms you then got same again with en suite so you know could we push up uh, an en suite room rate at the same percentage level absolutely not because the the en suite uh, rooms are probably at a high level but of course you know they are using more energy in terms of water and things so so there still has to be an increase so so actually that was something that we were talking about with the agents probably three to four months ago and it, again across a market and and even just within our portfolio of 60 rooms it's, it's quite a big change and obviously what we have to be really mindful of is pushing up and we've talked about this on the podcast before but it's pushing up the the room rates and then all of a sudden we're, we're suffering the lower occupancy levels however it, i got to the stage where because of the cost of utilities i said look we're going to have to push the button on my properties and we're just going to have to see how it goes because I can't, the, the business cannot stand for these room rates to stay the static, as static as they are anymore because the business cannot continue to trade in six months if, if we don't. Yep, quite. So the actual interaction with the tenants where you, you tell them the new rent and watch, watch them cry, is that all happening or is that all being done by the agents? Yeah, so that's being done by the agents. And I would say those that I'm aware of that we have already spoken to have actually been quite amenable to it. And and I think a large majority of them, their response has, not crying, it's like, oh yeah, I thought this was going to be happen. Surprised, surprised we haven't seen anything on it yet. Which always makes me think, God, you know, we are we as hopefully, you know, honorable landlords investors that are trying to do the best that's a, that's a good response it shows that we've been trying to think of them but most people you know that's the thing they, no one can be oblivious to what's happening right now in the world of all what's happening gl- at a global level as well as a you know national level so they haven't been surprised there will probably be a couple that are going to argue with their feet and just say well s- screw that but that's where i think the, when the market changes that they will see that that's happened anyway and so, so we've had to be very mindful of that. But that's very different for a situation like yours when you're living with, you know, uh, so you're working with, you know, families and, you know, others. So how, how have you approached your increase? Yeah. So just, just before I cover that, I'll, I'll add in a little anecdote. Again, talking to a, another landlord recently and they, they were going through a similar process and they said they increased their rents across their entire portfolio. And and it's a reasonable size portfolio. Again, it's HMOs mostly. And they they said they were expecting pushback because they're they're reasonably chunky increases. And and they didn't get a single tenant come back to them and say, say no, this this isn't isn't doable or or whatever. So so I think you you may actually may actually get away without any pushback. It's it seems to be that as you say, people are are really expecting it. So for for mine I've I've actually got one that is on quite a low rent for especially for for the the market it's in, and I'm planning to to put that one up. This is this is next year on their their annual review date, but as it currently stands, I'm planning to put that up by seventy five pounds, which is just over five percent. Both of those numbers sound quite big to me, as in seventy five pounds, an extra seventy five pounds every month. That, that sounds a lot, but it's it's five percent of the rent, so it's not crazy. It's only half of inflation, but even that five percent sounds quite a lot. However, even after that increase, that rent will probably still be around two hundred and fifty pounds a month below the market rate for that property. So. Maybe I should be bolder and and go go for more, but I just just feel bad. So so we we shall see. But but that that's my current plan. 
And and the process for that will, will be an email to the tenants a couple of months in advance saying that their their annual rent review is coming up and this is the new rent that I'm proposing. Can they confirm this is acceptable or okay? And and hopefully they will get back and say, yes, that, that's fine. And and then that'll be that. I'll, I'll email them back and say, thank you very much. Can you please ensure that you pay the new rent from X, Y, Z date? Uh, and based on past experience, that, that will, will happen. On, on one of my other properties, however, that's a much more recent tenancy, as in it started much more recently, I'm, I'm thinking about perhaps not increasing that one at all. The tenancy is, is well, on its next review date, it will be two years old. And there, I did not increase the rent on the first annual date. So it will be, be a second year without an increase. However, it's only, I think, probably £100 a month below, below the current market rate. And I know that when the tenants took this tenancy on, it was... It wasn't, I don't think it was particularly a, an overreach or anything, but it was sort of at, at the edge of what they, they could take on. So I, I just feel that I don't want to, to sort of push too hard on, on that particular tenancy. However, the other consideration for me on that one is that the mortgage on that property is coming out of its fixed period at the end of next year. So there, there is, is that looming looming potential doom of mortgage increase coming. So, so again, maybe I will reconsider in, in the early part of next year before, before the review date actually comes up. But I, 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 think, I think I'll stop talking there and uh, expect you to tell me to be harder. <laughs> well, I think it's, the, the equation is never as simple as, as we like to think because people are involved and particularly – you know, I know how I feel when I've got a good tenant in uh, in one of our flats who've been brilliant. And I can't tell you to be harder because I've actually just given them an extension for three months and taken some of the rent off. So, so <laughs> I'm it glad be, it's not just me. <laughs> it would be extremely hypocritical for me to say you should be harder. And of course, this is the end of the podcast. We should have mentioned this at the, the start of the podcast, shouldn't we? Just to say how nice we are as landlords, you know, that we 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 we'd either don't increase or actually we take money off but you know most most people won't have heard this now if they, if they haven't listened to the end but yeah I, but really what we should be doing is just looking at at, at the at the data the numbers and something we didn't even get to touch on today was is kind of like the percentage of rent as a as overall of people's incomes and you know that has not increased as much as as mortgage so so again you have to run the numbers What's the mortgage? You know any other costs that you have incurred in terms of maintenance and insurance, etc. And uh, you know if if it works for you and you're happy with the numbers, why not? Yeah, I mean this is the question. What what works is is your profit margin decreasing, still working, even though you're you're because you're still making a profit, or is it is it really that you need to maintain the same profit margin in order for for the business to be working and and I think the answer to that probably has to flex over time and in different situations. Beyond that, I, I think I'm not quite sure. Perhaps our, our listeners can can write in and let, let us know their thoughts. Yeah, please do. And I get the impression that Simon and I could probably talk about this subject for a further couple of hours. So we'll probably have to try and wrap this up before we just carry on and turn this into the property ramble as opposed to a, a property discussion. But as Simon says, if you do have any comments or feedback for us, reach out to us at tw- on Twitter at BIZ of Property, join our email subscribe list, click in the show notes, or head over to thebusinessofproperty.com and get in contact with us that way. Other than that, we'll see you next week.